Are we gonna clap? Look at Bailey, she's so excited. <laughs> Ready, yep. one, two, three, clap! Well, it's supposed to be three, two, one, isn't it? Oh, sorry. <laughs> oh, should we try it again? You know when the last time we recorded? Um, wow, it could have been, what, January maybe or something? No. May? What? Six months. Six months just flew by. Oh, wow. And our regular listener wouldn't even have noticed because of the clever production. Our regular listener. <laughs> <laughs> We're still on every week, every two weeks. It's still uh, here, magically. You are good, Walt. You were good. I was DMing with uh, Rick Harrington last week, and he's like, so glad to hear you guys are st still at it. <laughs> he was all excited. <laughs> Did you tell him we weren't? You don't know. So this is like the first day of school. We should do a warm-up. Ask me if I've seen any movies. Have you seen any movies, Walt? Nope. Oh, are we supposed to do a welcome? Welcome to Charmer World Chance, or do we only do the outro? We don't do that anymore. Did we ever? Uh -huh. <laughs> I don't remember. We tried to get it to work, but okay. it never did. You so. just dumped it yeah. in. We just yeah. do a completely raw, unfiltered yeah. podcast. Unfiltered. So ask me if I've seen any movies. Have you seen any movies? Nope. <laughs> yeah, what are you doing, Walt? We know you're not listening to music, so... I don't think you got the joke. No. Nope. Uh, oh, seen uh -huh. Did you like it? I didn't see it. I just made oh. the joke. Oh. Because <laughs> I saw it, and it was, I, you know, out of his three movies, I thought it was third. I don't know why it was getting, like, these tremendous reviews. I mean, it was good, you know. I mean, he's a good director and everything, but the the... Last, I would say at least third of it was just not, I don't know, just not what it could have been. It yeah, have been. that's what I heard. Yeah. So who wants to talk about their summer? I think Grace should go first. She had the most exciting yeah. end of summer anyway. Well, right? the end of summer started, well, geez Louise. Geez Louise? Geez Louise. The end of it started with the boxing match, I would say. Right. Because that was crazy. Yeah. Crazy. It was interesting, you know, it was in this gym, and it's it, the guy who owns it is an MMA champ, I guess. He's like an MMA world champ. Wow. And so his boxing club is pretty, you know, well-known. It's Mixed Martial Arts Club and Boxing Club, and, um, the, you know, the people that come out of there are pretty good, supposedly, whatever. And so when we got there, it was really a, quite a crowd, you know? I mean, as you can imagine, there were it just, like, my sister, my brother-in-law, and my nephew went with me, and... Grace is talking about her son, Luis, for oh, sorry. our regular listener. Yeah, Luis. Oh, is that his name? I forgot, because he left me. But, um... <laughs> but, um... <laughs> more on that later. <laughs> yeah, more on that later. Um, so, but anyway, we were definitely a little bit out of place there, you know. It was really like a lot of gym rat kind of boxing mm -hmm. people. Lots of tats? Lots of tats, lots of, you know, uh, muscle shirts and such. And, and the women were a little rough as well, you know. I <laughs> mean, just, it was interesting. The, the two, three guys from his, from Luis's gym came and Luis's gym is kind of the upstart gym. You know, it's, it's new and it's, you know, part of Terry's gym when Terry is a woman. So it's kind of like a, you know, it's not a masculine name or anything. But anyway, you know, we were sitting there waiting for it to start and there was a guy in front of me and I thought, and because Luis had did his had did Luis had did his research on <laughs> his competitor, and showed me a picture of him and everything, and I'm and I'm looking at this guy sitting ahead of us, two rows ahead of us, and I'm like, I think that's the guy that he's fighting. And he got up at some point, and then he came back, and he turned to the people behind him, and he said, Oh yeah, he's a lot shorter than I am. I'm like, Yeah, that's definitely him, because he's talking about Luis. He's got, probably got four inches on Luis. So when the fight started, the two people sitting next to me were like trash talking Luis. And, you know, I was just like, shut up, shut up, you know, in my mind. And I would just, you know, I wasn't going to trash talk the other kid. I was just, you know, saying, go Luis. And um, do you know how to trash talk the other kid? Would you would you be able to? Well, I learned some I learned some pointers yeah. from these people who were trash talking them, right. you know. So, because they were like, he's not projecting his face, you know, and, and he goes, 
He goes, he's turning himself out in the first round, blah, blah, blah. You know, and he, he, they're just saying all this stuff. And I mean, you know, it's not like he was swearing at him. Like, what a fucking asshole. You know, anything <laughs> like that. But, you know, they were trash talking him. And the first round, you know, the other guy got some good shots in, right? And then the second round, though, Louise just totally... And he told me later he was he and his trainer had decided they were, he was going to try to conserve his energy a bit, right? So second and third round, he just came roaring back. He had the guy in the corner most of the time. He um, <clears throat> apparently broke his septum. Oh, wow! And he knocked his he knocked his mouth guard out. Oh. And at that point, they this is in the third round. They started giving the guy an eight count. And then I looked over at someone and I'm like, what's going on? I'm like, the fight's over. Right. <laughs> so, so then they're standing. How many rounds would it have been? Three rounds. Three yeah. two-minute rounds. Okay. And believe me, it feels like forever. I forever. Bet. When you're watching. My sister actually got up and left. She could not watch. Wow. Yeah. Yeah. So. Um, and this is pure boxing, right? She so doesn't do MMA or. No, 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 no. No, it's just boxing. Right. So. The sweet science. Um, like, I've learned a lot from him. I, I really have. So anyway, they're standing in the ring. You know, the the ref is holding their hands, waiting for the decision. And they're like, and the winner is, in the blue corner, Luis Lazar. And he raises Luis's hand up. And I went, yes! <laughs> and he went, in your face to those people next to you, right? <laughs> yeah. I mean, the adrenaline. I can't even imagine what Luis was feeling, you know? Yeah. I can't even, it was, it was. I was surprised by the video, how so professional cool. and intense it looked, you know, for young guys fighting. Luis takes it very seriously. He really does. Yeah, it was impressive. Yeah, and the other guy, I guess, you know, he's not bad, but you could tell he doesn't take it as seriously. Like, Luis was in the room with all the boxers and trainers before the start of it, and this other guy was just kind of like, you know, sitting with his girlfriend and talking with, you know. And, you, you know, I'm sure Luis was, you know, getting in the zone or whatever. So you could just tell he wasn't taking it as seriously. But Are they the same age? Is it an age? Well, they were the same age. It's more a weight, right, That's in what general. I yeah. yeah. They were both 147. But the other guy, like I said, he was four inches taller. Mm -hmm. So it was just, it was really, I mean, it was fun. You know, I, I don't want Luis to get hurt. He thought maybe he had his nose broken, but it wasn't. We had an x-ray just in case, you know, and it wasn't broken. Mm -hmm. So Did you ever think, let's say, 20 years ago that you would have a son who boxed it was boxing within your range in your no radar. i thought maybe like maybe he'd be a soccer player or maybe he'd right. you know who knows what right right what do most kids right. play growing up a lot of them play baseball or soccer how did he latch on to that? i don't know he um you know boxing is i guess getting pretty popular again and maybe Maybe that's how he got onto it because, you know, he watches a lot of sports online and stuff. And my brother is really into it now, too. Hmm. Uh, he doesn't box, but he likes watching it. And, you know, right. I don't know. I, th I think maybe it's in the, the general culture or something like that of people huh. who like sports. I don't know. Yeah. But he just, you know, like as soon as he he started out training three times a week, you know, like mm -hmm. three, and he I think I mentioned to you, he lost 25 pounds in the first like three or four months. No kidding. Oh, yeah. Wow. Totally remade his body, you know? Wow. Yeah, it's pretty cool. So. And is he going to keep going? He found a boxing gym there. In fact, I found it for him because I was on my own one day after the um, students went on orientation. They had a two-night orientation, so I had the last two days to myself with some people that I met there. And um, I was just down this little side street looking for this little ceramic shop <laughs> that someone told me about him. There was the boxeo gym right there. And, and he, Luis said he was looking for a place that actually had a ring because that's how you can tell if it's serious or not. Mm -hmm. And I looked in and there's a guy on the bag and there's the ring behind him. So I sent him a picture. I'm like, this is where this is. And that's the one he joined. So cool. It was fun. I mean, it was it was fun to watch, but hard to watch. you know, it was like yeah. it was like a horror movie. You know, you're having fun, but you're like this. <laughs> Right. It is one of the few sports where the, the idea is to hurt the other person. <laughs> right, know. right. Knock well, them the out thing, cold. Yes, if you can. The thing is, though, I mean, when you learn more of the rules, you know, I guess I was just so stupid. I never realized what below the belt meant, you know, like, oh, that's hitting below the belt. Well, that's what it is. You know, you can't hit below a certain place. And, right. you know, you can't hit him on the back of the head. You can't, you know, there's a lot of... And, and that's even with professionals, right? I mean, there's a lot of rules, and right. they 
aside probably from all of like the mob influence and shit that probably still exists, right, right. you know, I mean, like in terms of how the fight is run, it seems like they're pretty serious about the rules. Right. Well, they have to be. So, I mean, have some kind of safety baked into yeah. it. But at the same time, the point is to smash the other person yeah. in your in I mean, head. it was... It was funny. Luis said, like, he says, like, the Hispanic boxers are the toughest boxers. Mm -hmm. And he was watching um, an old fight, uh, you know, in July or something like that. Anyway, it was like a 20 year old fight between these two well known Hispanic boxers. And it was, they went 12, the 12 full rounds. These guys would not go down. They would, I mean, they would not stop. It was a very good fight, you know, yeah. very good. And I was just like, I can't believe neither one, you know. And so I think that's like his model mm -hmm. you know right. whatever wants to go down right well it's an it's a lesson in endurance it's like totally. watching the uh the guys play tennis at the u.s open recently i mean these guys they played four five Did you get hours to go? no i didn't go this year okay oh. but watching them play and they just stand at the baseline and they fucking kill that ball you know whacking it back and forth back and forth back and forth as hard as they can for four and a half hours and it's I mean, amazing. four and a half hours. That's yeah. crazy. I mean, granted, they're not right. straight, a straight four and a half hours, but still, still it's though. incredible. Right. I mean, like with boxing, it's 12 rounds of, what is it, three minutes each? So, it, you know, it could be over within, you know, 45 minutes. Right. right. Or one round of yes. three minutes. <laughs> yeah. But um, well, I, I hear all the time when people talk, they mention boxing as the hardest. You know, after a minute, most people are done. They're, mm -hmm. they're wiped out no matter how fit they are no supposedly it is like the toughest sport right, right. yeah and that and water polo that's yes yes yeah. yeah. oh my god so how about the background on the rest of your story the rest of my story well you found the boxing place in spain why were you in spain oh oh did yeah. you realize that English is not the official language there. Did you <laughs> blend right in? Well, I felt like we blended. Um, yeah, Luis and I went there because Luis is going to college there now. And um, it was, I loved it there. Honestly loved it. Yeah, it's Honestly a beautiful country. Loved it. I couldn't find, and I'm sure there are things wrong with it, but there was nothing I didn't like. Mm -hmm. The city was beautiful. The food was delicious. Things were not that expensive. I don't know. The people were all pretty healthy and, and you know, dressed nicely. And you were in Madrid, seen... Grace? Yeah. I mean, the thing is, you know, every meal, like, there were very, I don't think we ever got, except for ordering paella, but that was, like, for four people. Um, I don't think we ever got one of those massive, like, five-pound plates of food. It was all, and it just all seemed totally fresh, and oh, it was so good. And what I liked, it was so funny. Uh, well, not funny, but anyway, um, you know, with that kind of midday meal, like the 2 to 4 p.m. ish, you, you got the daily menu in a lot of restaurants. So you had first course, second course, bread, beverage, and a dessert. And I never paid more than $14 for that hmm. at nice restaurants. Yeah. You know, the food was so every bill we got, I would I would say this would be twice as much in New York. Right. Mm -hmm. You know, and not even New York City, like Buffalo. So um, that was an interesting discovery. But just the arch the architecture. Right. I don't know. Just everything. I just loved it. Yeah. I was in Spain for five days or something. But what surprised me was the food. Mm -hmm. You know, you expect France and Italy. It's going to be great. But I thought it was tremendous yeah i took some pictures of the food <laughs> how did you come to be in spain and how did that decision get made well i mean i think i mentioned to you i think Luis played me because he told me initially when we were thinking about college is he wanted to go to korea and i was like mm, i no. Told me. <laughs> you know i mean there's just no how could i ever get there right. you know right. i couldn't mentally or physically <laughs> Physically, really, more than anything, you know? Yeah. So I, then he moved to, you know, Europe. And so, or, you know, he was thinking about South America too. So, and then we just did a lot of research and decided that either Spain or Italy was where he wanted to go. And and is he there for a, just a year or is he? No, supposedly, whole... supposedly four years if he stays right. in college. I mean, that's always going to be yeah. the, 
Unless he hangs out at the boxing gym. Right, right. <laughs> well, smoking he just, cigarettes. Street and... fights. <laughs> school is not his thing. And I don't think it's going to change in college. I don't know. I just don't think it is. But who knows? You know, if he wanted to be a boxing trainer or something, like he, he feels like maybe he could... I don't know, go professional. I don't know. Well, you know, I don't, know, I don't the know the answer to that. He'd have to obviously get more amateur bouts under his belt and blah, 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 blah. But That's a young person thing. Well, you know, there was just a big fight, Canelo and, and Triple G. And Triple G lost, but he's 40 years old, so he was going into his 40s. And right. what, George Foreman or something, wasn't he like 47 or something when he still won? Yeah. But obviously those are the pinnacle, right? Right. Right. I mean, young boys, especially maybe girls too now, but they all think they can make it. Oh, you know? yes. Whatever yes. they've chosen mm -hmm. yes. for it. Right. Oh, no doubt. Being an actor yes. or... And, you know... And don't give up on your dream. Right. Well, the thing is, there's, I think, obviously, in all of those fields, right, there's the talent part of it. But I just see, like, with my brother and other people I've known in creative fields or whatever, I don't I don't really know any professional sports people. But I think part of that also is the drive, right, you, know, right. for, you know, for sure. Like, you see that in creative fields. There's a lot of people out there who maybe aren't right. that great, but they have the drive to do it, and they do it. I was going to win the Indy 500 when I was 17. That's cool. I was, I was absolutely convinced that I could do it. I'm sure. And then I actually tried it. I mean, it took 45 seconds to realize I couldn't do it. <laughs> <laughs> Wait, you were in the Indy 500? No, no. I'm saying that that was my oh. that was my goal. But as soon as I, was, oh. I tried racing, I thought maybe you actually got in it. <laughs> no. No, that's, I mean, that's so far beyond anything that could actually happen. Yeah. As soon as I was in a car and other people went whipping past me and I couldn't figure out how they could do that, mm -hmm. I knew I, I knew it wasn't a real thing. Yeah. At so you didn't, was... you didn't do any training? You just went out and did a race? No, I went to schools. I went, you had to go to, I think, three schools at the time. And then you qualify for a regional license, and then you qualify for a national license. And oh. then, you, then you can race. But you were in regional races. Yeah. And, you know, I wasn't last every time, but I, I couldn't run yeah. up with people. I'd get lapped. Yeah. You know? He ain't first or last. <laughs> um, well, the thing is. Anyway, he might. Well, the thing is, I think this is, like, I've told him, although it doesn't matter what I tell him. And you'll, I'll tell you some more stuff, and you'll figure that out. Um if you really like something, but you're not going to be a professional boxer, be a trainer, own a gym. You know what I mean? Like make boxing clothes, whatever. Right. I mean, like his his equipment, of course, Luis has whatever he does. He has to have the most expensive or the most exclusive equipment. Right. Right. So he gets his um, shoes and his um, guards and everything from Japan. You know, and they're like his shoes are like 500 bucks. And believe me, I do not pay for these things. But, you know, like, so get into that. You know what I mean? There's a, right. if you really like something, you can get into it. You don't have to be the person who who is in the ring. Right. I just object to that. What is it? What's the TV show with a singing a singing contest? The, the voice? Oh. Well, yeah, that. And before that, it was American Idol. American Idol. You know, that whole. Never give up on your dream because oh, yeah. you're going and you will make it. Well, you won't. Yeah. Probably you won't. Probably yeah. You won't. <laughs> yeah, you won't necessarily be on the top of the charts, but you could be in the music business. You can go down to the Holiday Inn and sing. You know, right. Uh, for... Well, like my my brother, you know, my father, I guess it, my, my dad, you know, 91, soon to be 92, so take it with a grain of salt. But he said to my sister, well, you know, it's just weird that Sam is not a good drummer, you know. My sister's like, what are you talking about? He's like, well, he never made it. Well, yeah, he never made it into one of the national orchestras, but he has made a career as a percussionist. He's a good right. percussionist. Yeah. He, you know what I mean? Right. He just he doesn't feel like he's he's missed out on something because he's enjoying what he's doing. Everyone, right. I think, in a, a certain field, unless you're delusional, you realize, like the top 0.01 percent are the ones that may and and then but then there's the business of it and there's the lower right. levels of it that you can have just as good a career and just as right and being around it and getting your satisfaction that way and it's not just talent and hard work there's a lot of luck well there's luck too there's a lot of who do you know yeah yeah oh that too no doubt 
I mean, my my brother, I think I've told you, he's like, he just acted in a movie. It was a student, it was a film festival movie, right? So it's not going to get released anywhere, really. But he was acting with Susan Sarandon wow. and Louis mm-hmm. Black. And, you know, well, because his student, I think I told you, he teaches at the school yep. where like Daniel Craig's kids go and Bjork's <laughs> kids go, you know, and all that. So Mary Louise Parker's son got along with my brother really well. And, you know, my brother's really helped him and, you know, with his work and all that. And so this kid started making movies. And so Mary Louise Parker is friends with all these people. Right. And that's how he got into it. And that's, you know, he's like, he was on a set with Whoopi Goldberg and, you know, so he's, what a fun life. Mm -hmm. I mean, he's not going to win an Oscar, but who cares? He might, (laughs) if he doesn't give up on his dream. Right. That's true. There's still time. (laughs) Or your father's dream. <laughs> yeah, right. I couldn't believe it. See, but, you know, I think a lot of people outside looking in, that's what they think. If you're not, like, in the NFL or you're not in the NHL right, right. or you're not on stage at, you know, the Met, right. then you haven't done anything. Right. There's this show I've been wa- we've been watching, um, Welcome to Wrexham. You know about that? Someone else mentioned that to me the other day. It's a, do- you know, pseudo-documentary. But it's Ryan Reynolds and Rob McElhenney bought the soccer team. Oh, yeah. In Wales. Oh, right, right. Wrexham is a team that's at the absolute bottom of the, the system. It's not like American football. It's football. If you don't succeed, you drop down oh. to a lower league. Yeah. And they're trying to mm-hmm. get it back up to the next level. But yeah, that is so interesting. The point of that was, oh, the guys on the on the soccer team, yeah. they know they're never going anywhere. They're too old now or they're just not that good, probably. But they still, they love it. The whole town turns out every week. And oh, that's cool. Where is the team out of? Wrexham. It's a little town in Wales. Okay. It's one of the oldest football clubs in the world, I guess. And they've they've just, over the years, they just sunk down to the to the bottom. And, and now, you know, I got two Hollywood guys coming in with pouring money into it. And <laughs> just because it's fun for them. Oh, for a second, I thought you said pouring money into it. I was <laughs> yeah, like, <laughs> yeah, that's how Ryan Reynolds made most of his yeah. money. It wasn't right. the, the gin and the phone company. <laughs> so anyway, that, that that's just an example of you can enjoy, <laughs> still porn. enjoy what you love to do at a lower level, just because you're not going to be on American Idol. Well, and you know, I was reading about the, there's this new documentary about David Bowie, and it was talking about, you know, the most distinctive thing about him was that he was just interested in so many things and he never stopped trying to do different things. And Mm -hmm. like, I'm not saying I'm a genius like David Bowie, but I love learning new things. Mm -hmm. I love doing a lot of different things, you know, and and that does keep you going in life, you know, to stay interested Mm -hmm. in things and not to just vegetate. Yeah. Curiosity is a huge positive thing. I heard one of those reviews about Bowie that said he, uh, Anybody that he talked to, he would actually be interested, you know, unlike Tom Cruise. But he actually cared. Yes. Well, I don't know Tom Cruise. I'm just saying. You don't know I him. probably shouldn't. Well. By the way, Top Gun. Maverick, the new movie. Yeah. Highest grossing. Did you see it? No, I didn't see it. Top Gub. <laughs> Everybody in the world loves that movie except me. I hated it. I never saw the first one. You see the second one. You've seen the first one. Not interested. Yeah. Dumb, terrible script. So predictable. Yeah. yeah, and all that hype about, you know, it's all real, there's no green screen, it's all... It could have been green screen. It doesn't look, you know, it doesn't look that different. Mm. They get bounced around and they right, look right. a little concerned sometimes, like it's real, but I know. it's a terrible movie. It shouldn't. <laughs> mm-hmm. It's made a billion and a half dollars. I know. Well, no, what I wanted to say, though, was was the uh, the Ryan Reynolds movie. Do you think... They would have made that if Ted Lasso hadn't been out there on the horizon. It is almost real life Ted Lasso. I mean, it right, really right. comes so close in so many ways. And uh, See, of course Ryan Reynolds is just ripping him off. <laughs> See, I don't like Ryan Reynolds at all. You've said that before. You've got a real bad just, attitude. Yeah, there's just he does nothing for me. And that's why I saw the first Deadpool. I was like, well, if he weren't in it, maybe I would like it more. So I didn't bother with the second one. I, well, I was talking to someone yesterday. I don't know how this these same topics came up, but because um, they were talking about that Wrexham show. And um, I said, he just seems so plastic. And so does his wife. They just seem like plastic people. Right. You know, just totally manufactured people. I don't know. 
yeah. going back to Spain stories. Oh, God. This is a long story, isn't it? Yeah, I mean, he had to get a student visa. That was probably the hardest part of the whole thing. Mm -hmm. You have to... Mm -hmm. Yeah, mm. gosh, I guess we haven't mm. talked. In a... Oh, my Lord. You have yeah. to... Mm. Mm -hmm. Oh, I don't have to keep going. I'm good. We can talk about something else. <laughs>